It's a 10-yard pickup, but it moves the chains. Let's just go ahead and state the obvious. You're going to want a big game out of that guy. Big time run to get things started. But even more importantly, coming in on the road, trying to silence the crowd, take them out of it a little bit, slow down the emotions of the game, and get yourselves under control and feel like, yeah, we're going to be okay on the road. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. Shift together here from the D-line. Now it's the Boise State alum, Jay Ajayi. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. Now back to throw. It's brought in by Jeffrey. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. They'll run it now, out of the gun. They'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They run again with a Jay. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. They'll run it now out of the gun. Nine yards on the pickup there and it keeps the drive alive. I definitely like the play call. You don't expect it on third and five, third and six, do you? You expect a pass play. Had a little courage there to call the run, and boy, they were successful. They'll run again with blood. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Really tough drive, but that run helped salvage something there because now there's something positive that came out of it. They got to see good blocking, good push by the offensive line, wide receivers trying to get involved, a good run by the back. And now maybe it'll be a catalyst for them to look at going forward, watching it on tape. Maybe they can keep incorporating that type of a run into their offense. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get it inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Touchdown. LeGarrette Blunt taking it in from seven yards away. And the Eagles drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. 
This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. And he will lose yardage on the play, back at his own 19-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Here's Keenum now on second down. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Morgan. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. The offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. They're going to run it with Murray. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down around the 37. Nine yards on the pickup, and it'll be first down Vikings. connect on the long pass it falls down incomplete he was looking for Adam Thielen there and that'll bring up second down well Charles we've talked about controversial rules a lot this year but in that Cowboys Raiders game Derek Carr going in to try to win the game fumbled through the end zone of course, that's a touchback. The other team gets it. Is that a rule that you like? What do you think? Um, listen, I'm actually for the rule staying as it is. And for Derek Carr, the unfortunate part was when he fumbled the football, right, pylon is the problem. Yeah. Because when you hit the pylon now and you don't have control of the ball, now you're through the end zone. If he fumbles the ball, doesn't hit the pylon, it's out of bounds at that spot. And, it's, and if you have downs left, it's still your football. So it's risk-reward, just bad luck in some cases about where the ball actually ends up and what it hits on its way out. So I don't want to reward the offense anymore and give them extra opportunities. Ball comes out of his hands, hits the pylon, reward the defense. You have cause a fumble. Yeah, it was just such a big week with the ruling catch-no-catch, catch, Pittsburgh, New England, and that play. And that was a big game for both of those teams. It certainly was. You're talking about week 15 of the NFL season in 2017. You're exactly right. We'll look back at a couple of rulings that may have altered some teams' opportunities to make the playoffs. Now the offense not going anywhere. They're staying out there. They've converted once already on this drive. Here they go again on fourth down. They will go for it. It's Keenum. Eagle pressure to Miami. In there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. And it's a unit last drive. They did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior. Big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down.
Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. More from Minneapolis after this. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one. And that is going to set up a third and one. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it. And boy, the reward was there. A big, big pickup. And guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. The Eagles hustling to the line, clock rolling. On every snap, the defense is trying to establish who they are, but on third and short, that's really when you put it out there and tell people who you are, and that's exactly what they did. For the offense, they're looking at their offensive line and saying, guys, where are you? We need you on those plays. And now before this fourth and two play comes to fruition, they're going to think about it and call a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? A pretty large mental mistake right there to give them the first. It's situational football, and you have to know you're down in distance. On that fourth down... Any type of penalty would give them a first down, so you can't jump off sides, you can't encroach, you gotta be careful. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. That's what love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And the D looking like they may blitz. They'll go to Bluff, try and pound it in. They're held again, and do we have a goal line stand brewing? It's third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the pass. And he's in. Touchdown, Eagles. LeGarrette Blunt in the final seconds of the first half. And the Eagles have taken the lead. So they're able to break the tie just before halftime. Now they just don't want anything crazy to happen on the ensuing kickoff. Yeah, they want to just add the extra point, get the kickoff taken care of, and get to the locker room with the lead that they fought so hard to get. Elliott now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. To throw, it's Keenum. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with the pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of his first half.